Hi everyone, I'm back with another physics, university physics textbook question from Young and Freeman. Here I have with me is problem 2.87 and just a little warning, I guess, at the beginning, this question is a little bit tricky, so pay attention to uh, throughout the video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and or email me. Let's get started. So in the vertical jump, an athlete starts from a crouch and jumps upward as high as possible. Even the best athletes spend little more than one second in the air, their hang time. Treat the athlete as a particle and let Y max be his maximum height above the floor. To explain why he seems to hang in the air, calculate the ratio of the time he is above Y max over two to the time it takes him to go from the floor to that height. Ignore air resistance. All right, so to start off, let's draw a diagram. And because this question is a little bit tricky, I'm going to try my best to color code throughout the question just to understand where we are in the question and to make this just a little less confusing. Okay, so we're gonna treat the athlete like a particle. And as we know, when a particle or a particle jumps in the air, it's going to look something like this. It's gonna go up. This is the particle, right? And then it's gonna to start to go down. So it's gonna go up. It's uh, it's going to go up starting with some, some speed V. It's going to stop kind of at this point because it's the accelerating to V is, I'm gonna write this V top is equal to zero meters per second. And then it's going to go down to whatever speed it started with, right? And we know that because this is sort of this parabolic motion, we know that it is, or projectile motion, I should, I should say, we know that it is symmetric while it's going up and down in terms of speed, right? So what this question is asking is treat the athlete as a particle. So we did that. Let Y max be his maximum height. So let's just label that as Y max. There we go. And to explain why he seems to hang in the air, calculate the ratio of the time he is above Y max over two. So the time he's going to be above Y max, Y max, Y, yeah, Y max over two is going to be well, actually, let's just label y max over 2 right here. So let's just say that this is y max. Oh, let's, my hand rank's a little bit messy there. Okay, so y max over 2. Let's say that's y max over 2. And this, that means this over here is going to be the time he is above y max over two. Okay. And we wanna calculate the ratio that he's above y max over two to the time it takes him to go from the floor to that height, to that y max over two height. So we wanna know what is the ratio of this red motion to the ratio of this green motion. So the time it takes him to go from the floor to that height. So from the floor to this y max over two height. All right, ignore air resistance. So, well, if we go ahead and write down some of our knowns, we know that v top is equal to zero meters per second. We know that there's symmetry in projectile motion or this parabolic motion, right? And we also know that acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We know that the distances, so let's just say the total distance is equal to y max and half distance is equal to y max over two. Now, 
one interesting thing we can point out is that because we've mentioned that there's symmetry, we know that the time it takes to go from here to here, from the top, V top is equal to zero, down to Y max over two, is equal to the time it's going to take some speed at Y max over two to deaccelerate to zero meters per second. So we can actually use that to our advantage because if we use, because if we're looking for t, right, for this red part, if we're looking for t, what we know is we know v. We know, actually, I'm going to go ahead and write this in red just to make this as clear as possible. We know what v is, v top, right, the starting speed. We know what acceleration is, right? We know acceleration is equal to um, negative 9.8. We know what the distance is. So we know that's that's d half, right? And what we're looking for is the time, right? So if we're looking for time, we can use one of the five kinematic equations that actually includes all of these variables in it. So it can be d half is equal to v top t plus half of a t squared. And I'm just going to label this as, let's just call this uh, t1. So we can keep track. So this red t is going to be t1. And we know that v top is equal to zero. So d half is equal to half of a t1 squared, which means that t1 is equal to 2d half over a and square root. So that's what we have for t1. And we can always just multiply that by two, right? We wanna multiply that by two if we want to know both how it, when it goes up, the time it takes to go up and down because we just calculated the time it takes to go from the, the top to y max over two. So to get from y max over two to the top, it's gonna to take double the time we calculated. So we can just say t1 times two to go from y max to z top to y max over two. That's what we know. Okay, so now what we're going to be looking for is this green that we've highlighted right here. So now we want to find out what, what how like how long it takes to go from the ground level all the way to y max over two. So we don't know what vi is right here. We don't know what Vf is. So an interesting method we can apply to find out this is recognize that this over here is actually the same. It it's the same. It's going to be symmetric to the motion upward from zero from ground all the way to y max over two. It's going to be the same from y max over two all the way to zero. So because we recognize that, we can use that to our advantage and we can, we can go ahead and I'm just finding, sorry, I'm just finding a different color. There we go. Okay. And what we can do is we can calculate how long it takes to go from this V is equal to zero from the top all the way down to Y max. Uh, is equal, well, we can go from y max all the way to zero, all the way to ground level. And then we can actually subtract the red portion right here. And then we'll be left with the green, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So if we want to find this blue portion, I'm just going to do this blue portion right here. We know that again, v top, we have that. 
we know what acceleration is and we know the distance. It's just, it's going to be D total. And we're just looking for the time and we're going to call that total time. And again, we're just going to use the same equation, right? Because we're just trying to find out D total and we have all the same variables. So we're going to isolate for T total. So I'm going to do that now. V top T total plus half of A T total squared. And we are going to be left with T total is equal to, it's going to be equal to 2D total over A. There we go. So now what we can do is we can subtract the blue from the red and we'll be left with the green, right? So let's do that. And also one thing we have left to do is to replace like total with y max over two and y max. So d half in d total with y max and y max over two. Okay. So because now we're figuring out green, we'll say t for green, right? I'm not going to label that, or we can label that as T2, right? So T2 is equal to T total, which is 2Y max. Yep, Y max over A minus T1, which is going to be 2 d half, which is y max, or yeah, y max over 2 a. And essentially, if we simplify that, we are left with y max over 2 root 2 minus 1. And that's going to be our t2. And that makes sense. I'm just going to highlight that just so that we know where we are. But there we go. So that we have T2. And what we're looking for is the ratio of the time he is above Y max over 2. So that is going to be the ratio of the red to one of the greens. And I'm gonna go back to black because we're just answering the question. Oh, let's make that, there we go. And we wanna know what is Y max over two. We wanna know the ratio of this to this. So that's going to be ratio of T1, two times T1 over T2. And that is going to be, I don't have space right there, but so I'm just going to right here. 2 over T1 over T2 is going to be 2 times T1, which is right here. Or, well, oh, it's, yeah, y max over 2a, or there we go, y max over 2 over times 2a, 2 over a. And that's going to be over y max over 2 times root 2 minus 1. And we can cancel out these twos. We can also cancel out y max with y max. And we're left with 2 over root 2 minus 1. And I'm just going to plug that into my calculator because I forgot to do that earlier.
and I'm getting about 4.8 from that. And that's, that's our solution. So this is going to be 4.8. Now that was a little bit tricky. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask or watch this video again. And if, was, if this was helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.